Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. The Miami Hurricanes taking care of business against Bethune-Cookman Thursday night. But I want to focus a little bit more on the young guys who are stepping up for Miami. And you talk about the you being back. We've had that conversation. There is no doubt in my mind we are going in that direction. Seeing these young guys, kind of the, the foundation of what Mario Cristobal is building at Miami, step up. That's the most exciting part about this 2023 season now. Are they special in 2023? Absolutely. We said this going into the year. If it all comes together for Miami, this is a team talented enough to push any team in the ACC. That being said, the conversation has to happen on how dangerous this team can be in 2024 and in 2025 when you start getting some of these young guys really stepping up. want to highlight some of the guys that we saw step up, not only last night, but throughout the first three games of the season. Now, before we get into it, just want to say, Thank you to you guys, and many of you who have been listening know how excited I am about this Miami Hurricanes program, and quite frankly, how much I love talking about it, mostly because the support from you guys truly does mean a lot. You guys, the Miami Hurricane fans, have been absolutely awesome. I learned so much from you guys in the comment section. Have a blast talking ball with you guys in the comment section. So one, if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, but more importantly, let me know in the comment section some of the young guys that have been stepping up in your eyes. Let's chop it up there again. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. And what I want to get into, I mean, when this game was on third quarter, 41 to nothing, was at my buddy's house, had it up on the laptop. They were watching the Thursday night game. They were asking me, why are you watching this game that's 41 to zero in the third quarter? And I said, I mean, there's a lot of guys that we've talked about at the high school ranks who are getting their burn in the third quarter. And the most important part for Miami, if you kind of look at some of the other top programs, is these top programs take care of business against teams like Bethune-Cookman in the first half, and they get the young guys in in the second half, kind of getting those guys meaningful reps in game time. It's exactly what you're seeing Miami do, and you're seeing some of these young guys really step up. Now, to get into it, I want to start on the offensive side of the ball, and I want to go to the running back room, right? Mark Fletcher didn't play Thursday night. A guy that we talked about coming from American Heritage, was already built to play college football. Massive frame, bruising runner. We know what he can do, right? You take a look at his numbers, 13 carries for 82 yards. He's averaging 6.3 yards per carry. Mark Fletcher is going to be a staple of this running back room, not only in 2023, but for the next couple of years. A young guy that we hadn't seen get too much burn, Chris Johnson. And you talk about a really balanced Miami Hurricanes running back room in the future. You got your bruiser and Mark Fletcher, who's going to be dominant between the tackles. Chris Johnson. He's going to be special. I mean, that speed that he has, how explosive he is. You all saw it when he touched the ball. Fastest player on the football field. you got to get him the ball. And you talk about the balance and having different. I mean, everyone's going to a running back by committee, using running backs in certain situations. Mark Fletcher and Chris Johnson, in terms of balancing out that running back room, it's going to be a staple for that Miami running back room in the future. You have Kevin Riley coming in in the 2024 class. This is a really exciting room. But what's even more exciting is the offensive line that they're going to be running behind its next level. And we've seen Francis Maui Noah looking really, really good as a true freshman. But the most impressive aspect about Francis is that he's starting as a true freshman. I feel like we take that for granted, how rare it is to have true freshmen come in and play on the line of scrimmage. Now, you see running backs, wide receivers come in and start as true freshmen. That's because just that raw athleticism, speed, whatever it is, allows them to do so. You very rarely, even from the five-star guys, see them come in and start. Francis is special. You see Mario Cristobal say it. Alex Mirabal say it. He's going to be so special for this team. He's looked solid as a true freshman. And then the next guy who doesn't start, but he is going to be a staple on this Miami offensive line, Pancake Concho, Samson Okunlola. They're already kind of working him in in some of those heavy packages. But in the second half, you're seeing him get some burn. He's going to be a guy that I don't know if he's going to start as a true freshman unless someone goes down. That being said, he's going to be a staple. In this mind, and you talk about every team in the power five across the power five wanting offensive tackles in the transfer portal. Tell you what position Mario Cristobal probably not going to have to go to the transfer portal in, and that is the offensive tackle spot because Francis Pancake Concho really going to lock it down. Miami really has some bookend tackles that you're really excited about. Wide receivers, Ray Ray Joseph looking solid. I mean, you've seen him, they're trying to get the ball to him, he's just so explosive any way they can, kind of still trying to find his footing. Another guy we got to talk about, and this has been kind of a, 
a tightly contested, not a tightly contested conversation, but a conversation that a lot of Miami fans have been critical of the coaching staff is that's the quarterback position, right? Tyler Van Dyke, he's looked awesome. Miami may be missing out on a few top targets at that quarterback room. And you start seeing like, what's, what is life after Tyler Van Dyke look like? Man, Amory Williams, it was a lot of buzz was to Ja'Curry Brown, and he's going to be good for Miami too. Really, really talented. That being said, I mean, there is a clear reason why Amory Williams has moved himself up to that quarterback two spot, and the game just seems so slow for him. And as a true freshman, that is by far the most impressive aspect of Amory Williams' game. Right, 12 of 14, he's throwing the ball for over 10 yards per attempt. I mean, this is a guy that's pushing the ball down the field, making every throw that you ask him to make, and just looking so composed. The ball's coming out on time. The ball's coming out on time and accurately. The composure that Emory Williams is playing with, really impressive. And you talk about Tyler Van Dyke playing him into the end, playing himself into an NFL draft pick right now. I mean, you're taking a look at a guy like Emory Williams, who you can be really excited about maybe taking over the helm for Tyler Van Dyke once it's time for Emory Williams to kind of step up. Now, going to the defensive side of the ball, this is where I think you have your most impressive true freshman. If you guys were listening to us in the offseason, we talked a lot about him, Reuben Bain Jr. I, he is he's a wrecking ball. And you see the, the raw power, and everyone has kind of heard the crazy weight room numbers that he's putting up. I mean, I believe 405 on the bench press. This dude, legitimate definition of coming out of Miami Central. You kept hearing the buzz in spring practice in fall camp that this guy was just taking over, just dominating offensive tackles. You're seeing it on the football field. Now, you got some guys like Akeem Mesidor, Jafari Harvey, who are really good. Ruben Bain Jr. is making it borderline impossible to keep him off the field. I mean, you see him use his power to just collapse pockets, but more importantly, he's an absolute dog in the run. I mean, just setting the edge, standing up double teams, whatever Ruben Bay needs to do, he's making it happen. And that's the most important aspect of a true freshman playing on the line of scrimmages. Can you hold up physically? Ruben Bain is not only holding up physically, he's giving it physically to the opposing offensive lineman. Ruben Bain, by far, I don't know if I'd say by far, because Mark Fletcher has been pretty damn impressive too. Francis Mauinoa, been impressive. But Ruben Bain is kind of the guy that I'm taking a look at and saying, hey, he looks really, really good. Jaden Wayne would be a guy I'm not sleeping on either. You take a look at the pass rush, the future of this pass rush group, Jaden Wayne, Ruben Bain Jr., just ran in Armando Blunt in the 2025 class, potentially reclassifying to that 2024 class. The fronts, that's probably my biggest takeaways. Mario Cristobal just changing the physicality, and everyone kind of associated Miami with like speed and playmakers on the edge the last couple of years. Mario Cristobal kind of changing that narrative. This is a physical group that's really good on both sides of the line of scrimmage, and a lot of the young guys are the ones stepping up. Malik Bryan playing pretty well in the, kind of the limited snaps. Now, I do want to take a minute to talk about some of the second-year guys who are really impressing too. And I want to go back to the offensive line and talk about Inez Cooper and just kind of highlight what a job it was. And we talk about this a lot, the evaluation process in terms of finding some of those diamonds in the rough guys that might be a little bit overlooked. And Inez Cooper couldn't be a better example, right? Very limited offers coming out of high school in 2022. Alex Mirabal and Mario Cristobal extend an offer. He commits. He's dominant. I mean, you talk about one of the strongest interior offensive linemen. We talked about Matt Lee, Javion Cohen, Inez Cooper, seemingly a guy that is going to be really, really good for Miami. You talk about the young bodies on the offensive line for years to come. Inez Cooper, Pancake Hancho, Francis Mawinoa, this offensive line looking really, really good next year as well. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, a couple of guys stepping up too. And the first one I'm going to go to, we talked about Ruben Bain Jr. He's been really good. Nigel Lee Kelly, he's kind of coming along too. And he's got a guy that flashed as a freshman last year. Didn't play last night, I believe, due to injury. He's another guy. Just add him to the list of dudes on the line of scrimmage that are being extremely physical, extremely athletic, getting after the passer. And then the last guy I want to talk about, Wesley Bassain. And again, a guy that kind of came on the scene last year a little bit as a true freshman. This has been such a sore spot for Miami the last couple of years, that linebacker play. They hit on two guys in the transfer portal in Francisco and KJ Cloyd. Wesley Bassain really making it hard for him to keep off the field as well. You take a look at the first-year guys and the second-year guys that are really stepping up, the guys who are kind of the nucleus of this group, the nucleus of what Mario Cristobal wants to do, his first two recruiting classes. He seems like he brought in a really good class. And 
at this point, I'm throwing out the rankings, right? Mario Cristobal in 2022 and 2023 brought in really good classes. Now you can throw those rankings out and just see how are they, how are they transitioning to the college football level. It looks like they really hit on their evaluations because some of these young guys really stepping up and becoming the nucleus of the future for Miami. Now, we all do all this talk about the, the future being bright for Miami. I don't want to overlook that this group, could be really good in 2023. I mean, you're already seeing it. Dominant win over Texas A&M where, I mean, that game could have gotten ugly on special teams. They kind of just dominate the second half. You look towards 2024, though. And again, I'm not saying they can't win an ACC championship and make some serious noise in 2023, but we talk about the U being back. It's talking about stacking talent, developing guys for the future. I mean, this, this Miami team in 2024 and 2025, is going to be a dominant team, and most importantly, they're dominating the line of scrimmage. That's what I'm most excited about. But for Miami fans, like the young guys, stepping up in meaningful ways, this is such an exciting group. Again, I love talking about these guys that we cover coming out of high school. It's a blast. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys again. Drop your most impressive first, second-year guy, the Young Bucks, that you think are really stepping up. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys again. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And we'll talk to y'all later.